Yes. 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 Sire, I have more news. Um, yes. Well, it seems that the fighting has gone Enough. exactly as you... I would like to know what you intend to accomplish, Father. Should we not be fighting the Darkspawn instead of each other? The nobility should be brought into line and then the Darkspawn defeated. This is no true blight, Anora. Only Kalen's vanity demanded it be so. Beg pardon, Sire. But Blight or no, we may not have the manpower to face the Darkspawn soon. Kalen approached your legions for support, did he Never. not? Never! Marek and I drove those bastards out! We'll not roll out the welcome for them now! We need help, Father. We cannot deal with this crisis alone. Ferelden will stand on its own! I will lead it through this, Anora. You must have faith in me. Did you kill Kalen? Kalen's death was his own doing. And so you return. Lovely Morrigan has at last found someone willing to dance to her tune. Such enchanting music she plays, wouldn't you say? Why dance at all? Why not sing? <laughs> what has Morrigan told you? Hmm? What little plan has she hatched this time? That she does. The question is, do you? Ah, but it is an old, old story. One that Flemeth has heard before, and even told. Let us skip right to the ending, shall we? Do you slay the old wretch as Morrigan bids, or does the tale take a different turn? Choice. There is power in choices, as there is in lies. I shall give you one of each. Morrigan wishes my grimoire. Take it as a trophy. Tell her I am slain. It's far easier this way, don't you think? The lies are always more fun. Oh, I don't know. Random violence can be fun. But this is good too. Yes, fun tricking Morgan. Oh, who am I kidding? That does sound fun. I'm a bad man. The book is inside the hut, with notes and spells enough to make even Morrigan blush with delight. You and I will not meet again. That I guarantee. Change your mind already? I change knickers less quickly. Wouldn't we all, alas?
back to this again. Sabres rattling and jaws firmly planted on the floor. Oh, do something. Then do leave an old woman in peace. So many visitors. Next they'll be putting in a road. Maybe an inn. Yes. So, all this time we've spent together, you know, the tragedy, the brushes with death, the constant battles with the whole blight looming over us. Will you miss it once it's over? I know it might sound strange, considering we haven't known each other for very long, but I've come to care for you a great deal. I think maybe it's because we've gone through so much together. I, I don't know. Or maybe I'm imagining it. Maybe I'm fooling myself. Am I fooling myself? Or do you think you might ever feel the same way about me? Well, is it too soon for this? Good. I'll take that as a good sign. Make us breath, but you're beautiful. I am a lucky man. Now, <clears throat> let's get back to... What we were up to before, lest I forget why we're here. Yes. I am hardly surprised. Very well. As you wish. Here I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? The only way to truly appreciate it would be to go there. It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this Ferelden. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom. Or so the saying goes. It is fine enough with its dogs and its mud. The people are spirited, even if they can't tell the difference between an assassin and a mere killer. I hail from the glorious Antiva city, home to the royal palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand, my Antiva city. Do you come from some place comparable? Oh, I have never seen that place. I am sure it has its charms and its dogs. <laughs> hmm, you know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine, and its dark-haired beauties, and the lilo flutes of the minstrels, I miss the leather the most. <laughs> it may as well be, but not this once, no. I mean the smell. For years I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather-making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits, packed in like crates. I grew accustomed to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day, the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home more than anything else. Oh, not so long, I know. It is my first time away from Antiva, however, and the thought of never returning makes me think of it constantly. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in a store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship. Ah, but I was a fool to leave them. I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? True, and it's a comforting thought. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a Grey Warden, and then spared my life to fight the Darkspawn? I could not. 
quite right you are. I see the Grey Wardens do not recruit fools. Now, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer not to speak more of Antiva. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. And I'm off. I don't understand. You look like a woman. You are a Grey Warden, so it follows that you can't be a woman. Women are priests, artisans, shopkeepers, or farmers. They don't fight. Why would women ever wish to be men? That makes no sense. Do they also wish to live on the moon? That's as attainable. One of those things can't be true. A person is born, Gunari or human or elven or dwarf. He doesn't choose that. The size of his hands, whether he is clever or foolish, the land he comes from, the color of his hair, these are beyond his control. We do not choose, we simply are. Can they? We'll see. Ah, <gasps> Mother's real grimoire, is it? I am glad you were able to find it after all. My thanks for retrieving it. I shall begin studying it immediately and unlock the power that it holds. Quick! 
down. That was interesting and draining. I called forth the spirit that sustains me so that it could lend us aid. I did not realize it would take this much out of me. It seemed a good idea at the time, if a little rash. I think it may have weakened the spirit a little. Well, um, that's certainly conceivable. I suppose I shouldn't be using that particular trick to entertain children at parties. It's not a demon that requires controlling. Really, you need not fear it. I promise I'll be careful. And thank you. Your concern is touching. Yes? Yes, I'm still here. Huh. I must ask, what does being a Grey Warden mean to you? There's that, of course. But there's more to being a Grey Warden than killing Darkspawn and saving the world from the Blight. Ultimately, being a Grey Warden is about serving others. About serving all people, whether elves or dwarves or men. As a Grey Warden, you are a guardian of men. And you guard them because their continued existence is more important than you are. Thus, it is you who serves, not they. A good king, a true king, who cares for his land, uses his power to rule firmly but fairly. He serves his people first and foremost. The king who does not do this, who believes that he is entitled to his power, who abuses it and uses it for his own means, is a tyrant. If you live apart from others, and your actions affect only you, then you may do as you wish. But if you have power, influence, and strength, your every action will be as a drop of water in a clear, still pond. The drop causes ripples, and ripples spread. Think of how far they will go, how wide they will become, how will they affect the pond. But I've lectured enough for today. I should stop before I wear out my welcome. Something I can help with? Denerim is Ferelden's most important city, yes? This is the seat of power, the jewel in the crown of the king. She is Ferelden's heart. Her walls are strong, but within them lies so much beauty, just like the country and the people. Something I can help with? Denerim. If we have time, I would like to look for Marjolaine. We have a score to settle. Magic exists to serve man and never to rule over him. Foul and corrupt are they who have taken his gift and turned it against his children. They shall be named Maleficar, accursed ones. They shall find no rest in this world or beyond. I was getting to that part. All men are the work of our maker's hands, from the lowest slaves to the highest kings. Those who bring ham without provocation to the least of his children. The deep are dark before dawn's first light maker. seems eternal. Who bring ham. But know that the sun always rises. Does not bread sinners. Oh. 
strange that matters can be so tumultuous and yet the day still be so bright. Oh, my pardon, just thinking aloud. Are you here for the Chanter's board? Well-armed individuals that visit the rectory tend to be here for that. Chanter Rosmond is tireless and resolute in her duties. I'm sure you can find something of interest on her board. I am Sister Justine, curator of the reliquary of this chantry. <laughs> and pride again. <laughs> it is hard to live up to the example of Andraste. The archivist tends the books and I tend the sacred relics. I also search for more to add to our collection, which is more difficult than it sounds. My thought exactly, but I'm perpetually amazed at how quickly people accept fantastic claims at face value. A hawker on the street will claim to have an actual finger bone of Andraste. In this city alone, you could make the skeleton of ten prophets from fingers alone. Curators often accept them as genuine. I worry about the authenticity of even our most holy artefacts. When I was a curator of a much smaller chantry in Orlais, I thought that false relics slipped through because of laziness. But the life of the cloth is never an easy one, and that explanation always seemed hollow to me. Now I believe it's the seduction of the divine. We all want a personal connection to the Maker. We want to believe that what we hold in our hands is the actual sandal that slipped from Andraste's foot before the fires consumed her. Faith is of the heart, not of the head. When the heart is ungoverned by reason, charlatans have powerful tools to deceive. And often close to heretical. But I believe that the truth only increases the awe of the Maker and his prophet, not demean it. Even false symbols have the power to inspire. But it seems every year we fall more out of touch with the real Andraste. You've shown admirable patience listening to my diatribe before. I will not bore you again. Suffice it to say, I look for and authenticate holy relics for the Chantry. Well, there's one that might be real. I couldn't prove it wasn't. Perhaps you can understand my scepticism. So many claims, so few truths. Certainly, my research indicates that all of the ashes were gathered into a pot or urn, but it's been lost for centuries. That doesn't stop hawkers from selling pinches of the ashes of Andraste to gullible pilgrims. The real ashes may still be hidden somewhere, though it's possible the urn broke. Of course, enjoy your visit to the Chantry. As there is but one world, <laughs> Puppy! What? No mention of dessert? Surely this is a... Do you think the tower is ever going to get back to what it was, Wynn? I don't know. A great number of people died. It will be difficult to imagine rebuilding, with that cloud hanging over everything for many years to come. Do you think you'll be there? To help rebuild, I mean, once this is all over with? I cannot say. Even if I survive this blight, I am a very old woman, Alistair. Why? Because of some grey hair? You are a formidable woman, Wynne. You could see that it happens. I think you overestimate the number of years I have left. But perhaps you were right. Or perhaps the memories of what happened there will be too strong for me to face. I have a hard time believing that. Well, it's good to have someone that believes in me so. Now if I could only feel the same way myself, that would be something. Good day.
Hello there, Warden. I'm a friend. I've heard you're putting up the good fight against Loghain and Hal, right? Good for you. Make a spit on all those arrogant noble bastards. I've also heard you have certain skills. Skills of the street, you might say. No judgments here, mate. I want to help you. The name is Slim Cauldry, and if you've heard of me, I've been doing a sad job of it, haven't I? I hear a great many things, and for those who view certain pesky laws as mere nuisances, there's some ripe fruit to be plucked out there. I can point the way. All I ask is for a little slice for myself. Well, one of my mates noticed your skills. Nice piece of work, that uncommon calibre, if you don't mind me saying. But I need to know what else you can do. Ever done bump and grabs? Do much blending in shadows? Different opportunities for different folk, you know. More of a second story, man, eh? So was I back in the day. The thrill of the hunt. Dodging guards, in and out, no one the wiser. Ah, oh, the good life. Now that we have that settled, just ask away. One point. I don't like blood much. Call me old-fashioned, but the maker says thou shalt not strangle, decapitate or whatnot unless the other fellow really had it coming, eh? I realise sometimes you do what you have to, but restraint, right? So, what are you interested in? I've got a place for you. It should be easy money for you. It'll cost one sovereign, though. Lady Sophie is an intimate of Al Hal. Real intimate. She's visiting the country, because that's what rich folk do when the whole bloody kingdom's in danger. Sorry, they just get me so angry. <clears throat> her room in the Nord Noble Tavern is unattended. That means her valuables are just there for the taking. You've got the tavern staff to worry about, plus she has hired a guard. A very overworked, tired and bored guard, though. Just be careful, and you should be fine. Good luck. Warden? No luck yet, eh? Keep trying. I'm more of a man-on-a-mission type. Chit-chat's boring, if you ask me. Used to do a bit of second-story work in my day. But besides that, you don't need to know anything about me, and I already know all I need to know about you. Makes for a healthy partnership, eh? No. The Royal Guard would spot you on sight. The Palace District sits atop a tall mesa, steep cliffs, only one way in, and that's how they like it. Right you are. My client appreciates your generosity. That's my sister's house. I'm almost sure of it. This is, yes, this is the right address. She could be inside. Could we go and see? Do I seem a little nervous? I am. I really don't know what to expect. I'd like you to be there with me, if you're willing. Or we could leave, I suppose. We really don't have time to pay a visit, do we? Maybe we should go. I am not. All right, maybe I am. I am totally a coward. I just... What would I say to her? Does she even know I exist? Will she be happy to see me? Hmm. Oh, now I'm babbling. Maybe we should go. Let's go. Let, let's just go. Dwarven crafts. Fine dwarven crafts. Direct from Orzammar. You won't find better. I recognize you. From Ostagar. And trust his blood. You're a Grey Warden. Duncan's apprentice. You killed my friend. And good King Kaelin. I demand satisfaction, sir.
Pardon me, sir. You must think I'm a fool. You really do look like... Uh, too much ale. Yes, uh, too much. Uh, excuse me. I've been... Time. I hear Van Bronak got his helmet handed to him. Of course he did. Terran Logain is out there leading the troops, he is. Well, I guess that's good. It's a victory, right? Right. Ha! Huh. are the work of our maker's hand, from the lowest slave to the highest king. Those who bring hand without provocation. If you have coin, welcome to our shop. If not, move along. Too many refugees blocking customers. I didn't think so, sir. Too much flesh on the bones. <laughs> you walk tall, proud, not hunched. Sad times in Ferelden. Better trade cities to the north, but plenty good trade here. Now with war and blight, business is bad. Oh, yes. Another visitor, the Maestro. Enjoy browsing my wares. My cousin and I have trade connections all along the seaways. We have furniture, silks, carvings, and much more. Cesar handles the trade stock, I handle other affairs. No, I am not. I am a trader at heart. My home is the road. But I was born past the waking sea in Antiva. It has been many, many years since I have seen her. But the road... Is a better mistress than my home city ever was. On the docks of Rialto, life is cheap. As cheap as the dockside ale and the soiled horse. You can live a longer life out here. And a wise man can make a comfortable fortune in time. Straightforward, predictable danger is refreshing to me. Any moment in Rialto, the streets can run red and... Often do. I take dark spawn any day. At least you can see them coming. Um, no, not yet. Perhaps one day. It has been many, many years since I have seen her. But the road oh, is a better mistress than my home city ever was. Luck be to you, warden. You've returned, Warden. I heard it in Parsing. <laughs> it is said there are few secrets in the market. Aren't we all? I mean you no harm. That should be enough. I'm afraid my appetite for conversation has waned. Going. Ha, let's wait. Oh! Uh. 
Liliana. Ah, oh, so lovely to see you again, my dear. Spare me the pleasantries. I know you're... Oh, you must excuse the shabby accommodations. I try to be a good host, but you see what I have to work with. This country smells like wet dog everywhere. I cannot get the smell out. Even now it is in my hair, my clothes. Ugh. So business-like, your companion. You framed me, had me caught and tortured. I thought that in Ferelden I would be free of you, but it seems I am not. What happened to make you hate me so? Why do you want me dead so badly? Dead? Nonsense. I know you, my Liliana. I know what you are capable of. Four or five men you can dispatch easily. They were sent to give you cause to come to me. And see, here you are. You are so transparent. What are you up to, Marjolaine? Why are you in Ferelden? In truth, you have knowledge that you can use against me. For my own safety, I cannot let you be. It is you think I did not know where you were? Did you think I would not watch, my Liliana? What is she up to, I thought. The quiet life, the peasant clothes, hair ragged and messy like a boy. Uh, this is not her. You were planning something, I told myself, so I watched. But no letters were sent, no messages, you barely spoke to anyone. Clever, Liliana, very clever. You almost had me fooled. But then, you left the Chantry so suddenly. What conclusion should I draw? You tell me. You think I left because of you? You think I still have some plan for... for revenge? You are insane. Paranoid. Oh, is that what you think? If I were you, I would believe nothing she says. Not a one. She will use you. You look at her and you see a simple girl, a friend, trusting and warm. It is an act. I am not you, Marjolaine. I left because I didn't want to become you. Oh, but you are me. You cannot escape it. No one will understand you the way I do, because we are one and the same. Do you know why you were a master manipulator, Liliana? It is because you enjoyed the game. You reveled in the power it gave you. You cannot change or deny this. Thank you. You will not threaten me or my friends again, Marjolaine. I want you out of my life forever. Leave Ferelden. Go back to Orle and never return. What you do is no longer my concern. I see. I will go, for now. But you carry a dangerous secret of mine, Liliana. It is not over. Not for us. She's gone. I don't know what to think. She said it wasn't over. No, she was lying. She won't come back. I... I need some time to myself. We... will talk later. And I'm off.